We're here, the 2022-23 Zwift Racing League finals, and the first semi-final is in Scotland on the City and Skur Climbers course. This one, climbing repeats, a 45-minute race, is going to make for a really interesting tactical route. This one, let's dive straight in to this week's recon. Okay, welcome back. And of course, today we're on the course which was used for round two, the climb of the UCI Cycling Esports World Championships just a few weeks ago. It's on the City and Skur course. This is also the course that they've been using for stage four of the Z Racing, a series which I have really loved doing over the last couple of months. If you've not checked it out yet, go and check out ZRacingZwift.com forward slash racing as i've said stage four is in this course in fact the footage you're going to see today is from the z racing series if you've not checked it out already go and check it out i've had real fun chasing that general classification each month in the z racing series so of course this is the first of two semi-finals before we roll on to that final which is a team time trial around the rolling highlands course but of course we're competing here for regionally for the cup, the shield, the plate, and the bowl. But let's be honest, what we're really chasing is the coveted Zwift Racing League virtual helmet. I'm also yet to get my virtual hands on one of those coveted helmets. And that's something that Chris Venkert, the Zarina K, reminds you of every time we take a video call, because I know he's got one. Not that I'm bitter or jealous in any way, but I really want one of those virtual Zwift Racing League helmets. But anyway, Let's get on with the recon. All right, so the course itself, yes, is pretty short, but there's some really interesting tactical decisions to make. And of course, the format, the race format, is really interesting here too. On the face of things, it's a normal points race. There's still first across the line FAL and fastest through segment points. The FTS points are available on both climb segments on this particular route. But of course, it's also about the distance travels. This is a fixed 45 minute race and the riders and teams that travel the most distance will also get more points so there's something to think about there in terms of tactical decisions for your team and as an individual rider here to maximize those points just before we move on if you're enjoying this video and in fact if you've enjoyed the other recons the other the other recons that we've done this season why not consider subscribing to the channel if you've not done so already we are approaching 5,000 subscribers and I'd really like to get there before the end of the final so give us a subscribe if you don't mind and why not give the channel a quick thumbs up also the engagement really helps the channel right let's move on move forward look at the recon notes the all-important bike choice for this course and then what I think could be some crucial power-ups for this course as well so first of all here are the recon notes and as you can see it's basically just one climb that we're going to ascend and descend in both directions and it's the ascents on this climb on both sides where both segments are so basically you've got the north and the south side of this score climb as always the links to the videos and all the recon notes for all the courses that we've done so far on Zwift are available on the community pages at levelvelo.cc so go and check that out and why not have a quick look at some of the kit that they've got over there at the same time. So yes bike choice is an interesting one on this one and despite my team wanting me to keep my lips sealed I can tell you that a gravel bike is the best choice for this course. It's the fastest on the course but most importantly the key segment on this course the longer of the two climbs is a dirt gravel climb and that bike or those gravel bikes will be fastest on this course and i think over a 45 minute race whichever category you're in the gravel bike will be the choice for this particular course that's despite me getting beat on the z racing series by both as s works venge with discs and a Tron bike on this course. But there's a reason for that that I'll come on to later. But me personally, I'm gonna be using the specialized Crux with the Kadex gravel wheels, as I think they'll be the fastest choice in my garage. If you wanna know what the fastest choice is at your level and in your garage, then go and check out ZwiftInsider.com for more information. All right, before we get on course, let's look at power-ups because the power-ups on this one, I think could be an absolute game changer. First of all, we've got the aero power-up, which could be useful, of course, for closing gaps or making gaps, and it could be useful for the final 100 meters or so 
as you approach that finish line. In fact, the finish line is pretty irrelevant on this one because it's a 45 minute race. So scrap that final statement, but it would be useful in particular segments to closing down gaps or maybe making gaps. The same can be said with the feather because again, there is a lot of climb. This is basically a climb repeat course. So that feather could be absolutely crucial in making gaps or closing gaps and making a break as a team on this particular course. But for me, the killer power up on this one is the anvil. We've seen how powerful the anvil can be on descent, adding 50% additional weight. And I think again, going off the top of these climbs, picking up an anvil power up, if you get that cloud effect of the anvil, increasing the speed of the group, if you don't have an anvil, that's where you've got to watch for gaps opening up. So again, anvil could be the most powerful, useful power up on this particular course. All right, enough of my jibber jabber about bikes, power ups, recon notes, and all of those zwifty things. Let's get on course, let's get in the pen, and let's take a closer look. All right, as we sat on the pen, you can see I, I am on a gravel bike, and indeed there's a lot of trons and other bikes around me there. And I will say, I did get beat on this particular one. I think I was fourth or fifth in the end, but I'm putting that down to an Alex Co Endurance Co special workout that I'd just done immediately before this workout. That was called The Nuke, so I think that says enough about that workout and my legs were absolutely spent. So enough excuses, we're gonna leave the pens, we're gonna leave Glasgow City Scent here, and very quickly we're gonna to head towards this first ascent of the Segura Summit North Star Banner. So we're gonna hit this roundabout, take a left, and the start you can see is at kilometre 1.1, the red marker just on the left-hand side of the floor there. This first climb is 1.6 kilometers long. It's the longer side of the two, and this is the side that's on gravel as well. There are some flatter sections here, so it's just gonna be mano a mano, but I do expect the pace to be up early here and people to be pushing on, trying to lengthen out that peloton and create some gaps. You are gonna to get to the top of this first climb at kilometer 2.7 before we descend down the other side for just over a kilometer, loop around the roundabout, and then head straight back up the other side of this climb. The other side of this climb, it's gonna start at kilometer 4.2 and end at 5.1. This is the tarmac side. So again, if you have made the choice to go for a Tron bike or a road bike, this is where you need to be pushing the pace and trying to hurt the legs of those gravel bike riders. So again, on this south side of the climb, it's just one kilometer long this time. And again, if you're on a road bike or on a Tron bike, this is the time where you need to be pushing on and hurting the legs of those riders who've chose to be on a gravel bike. Remember, each time you pass the banner at the top in both directions, you are gonna be picking a power up. And of course, FTS and FL points are available on both sides, both segments on this particular climb. So once again, you're gonna hit the top, roll back down the gravel side. So again, 1.6 kilometers on the dirt, down the other side, back to the north side roundabout, loop around before you start the north side climb again. This north side climb again will start at kilometer 7.0, ending at kilometer 8.6. Now again, there's no set finish line on this. It's a 45 minute race. So at the end of 45 minutes, the individuals who've covered the most distance will pick up the most points in terms of the finishing points. So that's it, I said the course was short. It's a short and sweet course, but there's two segments there to think about and all the detail here is gonna be in bike choice and power up usage. As I said, maximizing the use of that feather and most importantly, that anvil power up at the right times. If you're lucky enough to get your whole team to have the anvil at the same time, then you may consider using that. But again, the chances of that might be pretty slim. But remember, this is a team sport. So if you are planning on making a break, you need to have teammates around you to maximize those points, in particular with this format, with the fixed time and all about that distance. Good luck this week. Have a great week's training. If you've not done so already, go and recon this course. Go and ride the Z Racing Series that Zwift put on because stage four is on this course. Have a great week. I'll see you in the start pens for the Zwift Racing League finals.